starts now. Live, this is ABC 25 News at 6. You send your children to school to learn, expecting them to be safe from harm. Tonight, two cases of teachers, each accused of hurting a child. One of those cases, a high school teacher is accused with having sex with a teenage student. The other, an elementary teacher arrested for aggravated child abuse against a pre-K student. We begin tonight with the elementary school teacher's story. ABC 25's Alan Kelly is live at Cedar Hills Elementary on the west side, where this abuse allegedly took place. Alan. Bruce, that's right. We're talking about a 53-year-old veteran school teacher who was arrested right here at Cedar Hills Elementary School Wednesday, and she's accused of assaulting a four-year-old boy. Police aren't saying exactly what Ms. Holden's story is, and she did not return our phone calls today. The Duval County School Board's releasing virtually no information about this arrest. But experts in the field of special education say that teaching this age group of children that are emotionally or mentally handicapped can be very tough business. Sometimes there'll be children who are very aggressive. Uh, short attention spans where they are jumping from one thing to another. Uh, you might have some poor impulse control where they don't think about what they're doing before they do it. The child was not seriously injured or hospitalized, but tonight the teacher is facing a felony charge. Now we missed the beginning part of that story and uh, that kind of outlaid what uh, uh, police say happened here and what some witnesses say happened here. They say that uh, Ms. Holden, who is the teacher we're talking about here, was uh, trying to put a child into a seat and that she repeatedly slammed the child into the seat and this was witnessed by a vice principal here at the school. He felt the child was endangered and could have been harmed so he called police out here and uh, police arrested her based on uh, that event being witnessed. Now, we're told by some teachers that we talked with who didn't want to go on camera here tonight that uh, Ms. Holden is a very respected teacher. She has two degrees. She's a registered nurse, and she uh, was even elected Teacher of the Year here at Cedar Hills a few years ago to represent uh, her school throughout the entire district. But of course, tonight she is facing a felony charge. Reporting live from the West Side, Alan Kelly, ABC 25 News. Tonight, another area teacher is on the run, wanted by police for having a sexual relationship with one of her students. In fact, there's a nationwide search for 27-year-old Lisa Marie Johnson, a social studies teacher at Brunswick High School. As ABC 25's Maria Satteris shows us, students at Brunswick High are in shock. Thinking it's so nasty, and it is. It's not something that they should have done. Oh, students at Brunswick High School say it was the buzz of the halls. Their social studies teacher accused of having a sexual relationship with a freshman. If the boy knew it was wrong, then he shouldn't have done it, and the teacher knew it was wrong, so she shouldn't have done it either. Some teachers even made it a part of their lesson and let students discuss it in their class. People had different feelings about it, but I just think that a lot of the kids said they didn't agree with it. This was Johnson's first year teaching here at Brunswick High School. Police say they believe the relationship started sometime in October, but they don't think any of the sexual acts happened here on campus. Police believe the incident happened at her apartment. Johnson was supposed to turn herself into the police yesterday afternoon, but never showed up. President of the school board says she's already been fired. She was going to be terminated, no question about that. This was a question of how. Some students continue to question how their teacher could make a decision that would cost her her job. That's, that's very wrong, especially the teacher, you know, supposed to be a role model. She, should, she shouldn't have done something like that. Now, if and when Johnson is arrested, she could face up to 30 years in prison. Several officials told us today they believe this is not the first incident the 15-year-old has had with a teacher. Reporting from Brunswick High School, Maria Satteris, ABC 25 News. In the meantime, police are still searching for Johnson. If you have any information of her whereabouts, you are urged to call the police. Now, Johnson did not have any prior arrests, but this does raise some concerns about the issue of background checks for school employees, so we did some checking ourselves. Glenn County does not have any teachers working that have been arrested. All teacher applicants are fingerprinted, and an FBI background check is run. If anything of concern is showing in the report, the school board brings the applicant in for questioning. In Florida, each county performs some form of an application process that includes background checks. In Duval, all school personnel must first go through an application process and provide references. Then they undergo local, state, and federal background checks. After that, they're fingerprinted, and that's when authorities look for certain red flags. As we first told you last night on ABC 25 News at 6, thousands of Florida students may be breaking the law every time they get behind the wheel of a car. That's because under the law, if a student is habitually skipping class, the school district can stop that student from getting a valid driver's license or take away the one that they already have. 
However, new reports show that many school districts are not turning these students in. In Duval County, educators are complying, however. Last year, Duval had more than 5,000 truants. But remarkably, less than 15% were repeat offenders. That's because school officials take programs aimed at cracking down on truancy very seriously. We have rules and regulations. Those rules and regulations could be reach out and actually fight you. And we are told besides Duval, Clay and St. John's County are complying with the new law. Some middle school students in Ponte Vedra are learning just how tough it is to be a parent. It's part of a class project aimed at helping them make the right choices in life. ABC 25's Keith Koontz with that story. Let's get my little baby! At Landrum Middle School, babies are everywhere this week. Flower babies, that is. We're going to play tea party. Students in Mrs. Lawrence's home economics class are taking care of their own babies this week. I think the biggest job anybody ever has in their life is being a parent. And it's one we don't get trained for. We don't have to show that we're qualified for. But most people are parents at some point in their life. And raising a child, there's no job that's any more challenging or any more important for us as a whole. It's been an eye-opening experience for the kids who've had to take their little ones everywhere this week, from the bus stop to all of their classes. Some have had to deal everywhere. with twins. When you're carrying them, um, it makes your arms, and it makes it ten times harder than it would be on a regular day, because it's hard enough just carrying all your books. So whenever I go to store, I have to take them, or whenever I carry my books around, it's a lot heavier. And all of the students are keeping a detailed diary of their experiences. Kids who don't take good care of their infants, say they leave them unattended in a classroom, get in trouble, just like the real world, and end up in front of Judge Lawrence. You go with me? Punishment for a student who left her flower baby in art class, a writing assignment, and a lecture from the judge. What if a bad person had come along and gotten your baby? Lessons in real life about the time, effort, and sacrifice it takes to be a good parent. In Ponte Vedra, Keith Koontz, ABC 25 News. Now the students will be graded for their week of parenting, and those grades will be determined based on the diaries that they keep. Well, if you're looking for something to do with your children, your real children this weekend, how about the Air and Sea Spectacular? Mm -hmm. We have live team coverage of the big event. ABC 25's Bob Riddell is at NAS Jacks, where the night show is already going on. And ABC 25's Rob Harlison is live at the landing where the sea demonstration is going to be held. We begin with Bob. Go, 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 go. And if you guys can see right now, it's the first night air show here at NAS Jacks. And take a look at this. I don't know if anyone's ever seen this before. It looks like Tinkerbell uh, flying around like just while she's dispersing fireworks. That's actually an airplane. It's called the Pepsi Sky Dancer. And what it's been doing for about the past, uh, I don't know, five minutes, flying around with two flares on its wings and shooting off these fireworks along the way. This is all part of the night air show. And of course, it being in the night, they do need to light up the sky and somehow. If we could take a look over here, over my shoulder, I don't know how far you can see, but there's a big truck out there and it does not have a conventional engine on it this thing has a rocket on it and what it's going to do it's going to light that rocket up of course lighting up the sky and blast itself down the runway at 300 miles an hour and you want to talk about some poor gas mileage i'm told that it'll burn 80 gallons of gas in 10 seconds of course we'll have that later at seven o'clock this is bob Riddell reporting live back to you we continue our team coverage now with abc 25's rob harleston he is live on a 27-foot gunboat, one of the ships that uh, you can actually get on there and take a tour up. Rob? Hear me, we are out in the middle of the St. John's River, and I am with Chief Petty Officer Bob Fennell, and we've got Petty Officer Todd Caldwell at the wheel. Chief, tell me, what kind of vessel is this, and what is your mission? This is a 27-foot armed patrol boat. And we're assigned to Naval Coastal Warfare Group 2 out of Williamsburg, Virginia. And we're charged with the waterborne force protection. Okay. And tell me, what, are the, what kind of things are you telling the folks when they come down here for the tours this weekend? Well, what I'm telling them is that they're certainly getting their money's worth with the uh, investment they made in the inshore boat unit. It's a relatively low-cost uh, unit, and it, the return has been phenomenal already. We've been assigned uh, many missions. Last year, we were in, uh, in Turkey last year. 
charged with uh, force protection of maritime prepositioning ships and amphibious forces. All right, thanks a lot, Chief. Now, there are going to be many more military exhibitions out here at the landing next uh, tomorrow, starting at 10 o'clock in the morning and running until 6 at night, and that goes tomorrow and Sunday. And then just downriver is the USS Morrison, the frigate also assigned here in Jacksonville. And the tours there start at 9 o'clock in the morning and run until 11, then they break for lunch, and then you can start coming back again at 1 in the afternoon, and that runs until 4 in the afternoon. But for now, I'm Rob Harleston live on the St. John's River, just a little bit south of the landing. Back to you guys. All right, Rob, it looks good. And as I can see, there's a beautiful sunset going on out there as well. Now, if you are planning on heading out to the Jacksonville Air and Sea Spectacular, here is the weekend schedule for you. On Saturday, the air show at NAS Jack starts at 945 and goes on until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And the ships are open for tours at the landing from 1 until 6 on Sunday. Same times for the air show. But the ships open earlier at 11 o'clock in the morning if you want to get out there. Check it out. Still ahead on ABC 25 News, one celebrity couple is back in the news. And wait till you hear it. That's right. We're going to tell you about Dennis Rodman's latest run-in with the law. That's plus, still ahead. Plus, for decades, families have traveled to Marine Land. Soon that May fun come to an end. We'll explain after Brian's forecast. And that forecast includes what's ahead for your weekend. You'll want to know. Stay with us. Live from ABC 25, Bruce Hamilton, Karen Adams. First alert weather with Chief Meteorologist Brian Albrecht and Sports Blitz with Barry LeBron. You're watching ABC 25 News at 6. WJXX.com is your connection to the most up-to-the-minute local Doppler radar online. Online at home or online at work. Weather information when you need it. Log on to WJXX.com for current weather conditions, storm warnings, the exclusive ABC 25 7-day forecast, city cam, beach cam, and the first alert Doppler radar. Online 24 hours a day. Only on WJXX.com. From the ABC 25 Weather Lab, Brian Albrecht's forecast is approved by the American Meteorological Society. A couple clouds today even got in the way of the sunshine a little bit. It looked a little iffy, but no rain anywhere in and around the area. Clouds clearing now. Another beautiful night. Temperature is starting to fall, but not as quickly, and they're falling from a little bit uh, higher levels today. So things are looking pretty good this evening. Temperatures will be down into the 50s in a few hours, but overall, if you're heading out tonight, just a light sweater or a sweatshirt or a jacket. Should do you just fine. Out at the beach, eh, same story. The lights of A1A and uh, Jacksonville Beach showing up nicely as we look south from our vantage point at Beach Boulevard and 2nd Street. On the first alert live Doppler radar, no precipitation anywhere nearby. Not much cloud cover around. Satellite imagery showing a few little thin clouds that came in off the ocean. No main weather system here, just low level of winds out of the northeast coming across a good long fetch of warm water and bringing in a little bit of moisture into our area. Some high clouds in southern Florida, but uh, still partly sunny and uh, very nice in the southern part of the state. Tonight, mostly clear, down to 48 for an overnight low. Cool, but not cold. Tomorrow, mostly sunny. Another very pleasant day, a little warmer than today, 76. Today's high temperature was 74 after low this morning of 48, so tomorrow won't be a whole lot different. No rain in the bucket, 85, the record high. That was set in 1959. 61 now, northeast wind at 5, and the pressure is still very high. 30.42 inches of mercury. It's slipped down to 59 in Brunswick, 61 Jacksonville, 65 degrees in Gainesville, and farther south on I-75 in Ocala, 66. 61 Atlanta, 58 degrees in Raleigh. They've been the cool spot all week long as they're closer to the uh, Arctic high pressure center. It's been sitting around our area. Basically quiet weather all across the east. A few clouds, sprinkle or two of rain up in New England, but it looks like it's going to be a very fine weekend. High pressure, the windy weather we had today off the ocean will slip a little farther south as the high pressure area itself gets a little closer to us, actually drifting along to the southwest with a ridge extending over our area. Northeast winds a little lighter tomorrow. Lots of sunshine, mostly sunny skies. Highs will be in the mid-70s across most of southeast Georgia and northern Florida. High temperatures tomorrow will be in the 70s. We'll look for a water temperature of 71. The marine forecast, northeast 10 to 15 knots on the winds, 2 to 4-foot seas. And the ABC 25 seven-day forecast, uh, things are looking all right all weekend long. Temperatures will be very mild during the day. Nice and cool at night, so if you're uh, you know, wanting to start a fire in the fireplace, that'll be okay, too. During the day, you can open up the windows, air out the place, and get out there and just enjoy the outdoors. Big air show. The weather looks beautiful. Visibility should be great. So all in all, 
one of the nicest weekends you're ever going to find, mm. not only here on the First Coast, but anywhere. And I'm going to be out in it, too. Okay. All right. Sounds great. <laughs> okay. Well, Marine Land, the world's first oceanarium, has been shut down for almost two months after being damaged by Hurricane Floyd. Ironically, one of the reasons Marine Land was built where it was was because the beachside property was believed to be safe from destructive hurricanes. It was supposed to be open this weekend, but that has been delayed, we understand, until next week. And as ABC 25's Ned Roberts shows us, even larger changes could be on the way. If these dolphins look happy, maybe it's because they know crowds may soon sit in the now empty bleachers and watch them perform. Recent hurricanes ruined walkways in other parts of marine land, forcing a temporary shutdown. Officials say they will reopen Wednesday, but the more than 60-year-old facility is nearly $10 million in debt, and there are those who say the reopening is really the last hurrah. Well, it's a sad situation. Real, real fast. Harry Stuckey has worked at Marineland for 39 years. He's worried about a proposed sale. Marineland officials say a deal they're negotiating would sell some of their 19 dolphins to the operators of SeaWorld, while a research foundation would buy the facility, remaining dolphins, and other marine life. Their goal is to keep the park as it is and just maybe move some of the dolphins across the other side of the street to, for dolphin therapy type programs. People go over to Central Florida now, and they don't have, once they get over there, they go broke and have to go home. They don't have time, no money or time to go anywhere else. Whatever does happen, it's clear the winds of change are blowing in at Marine Land, a place that has shown generations of people a little bit of what life is like out in the ocean's depths. In Flagler County, Ned Roberts, ABC 25 News. And officials at Marine Land say the sale could be finalized by the end of the month. Hurricanes Floyd and Irene also caused problems for stone crab trappers. And if you eat crab, your wallet's bound to feel the effect. Prices have almost doubled. Floyd killed a lot of uh, pigs in North Carolina. Pig feet are needed to bait stone crab traps. And a few weeks later, Irene dealt trappers another blow when it wiped out thousands of traps in the first days of the trapping season. Meanwhile, consumer advocates are warning you to be extra careful, careful if you're buying a new car in the next few months. Cars damaged by floodwaters from Hurricanes Floyd and Irene could be for sale anywhere in the U.S., Experts say the damaged cars may look and run just fine at first, but the corrosive effects of water could cause problems later on. If you want to check the history of a car title, call the ABC 25 info line, and we will tell you how you can do just that. And speaking of cars, coming up on ABC 25 News at 6, some new inventions that may put an end to your visits to the gas station. But first, here today is Georgia Cash 3 midday drawing numbers, 851. see news happening, call our ABC 25 hotline at 332 News or Star 25 on your Bell South mobility phone. Coming up on World News Tonight, performing complicated surgery on a patient who is not a person. A medical simulator with eyes that blink and a heart that beats. Medical technology on the cutting edge. And we hope you'll join us. C-25 First Alert, Live Doppler, a sophisticated system of radars that covers 300,000 square miles. Able to predict severe weather first and able to track it farther than any other system available with pinpoint street level accuracy. Technology so precise it can help save property and lives. ABC-25 Live Doppler, the power behind the ABC-25 First Alert Storm Team. Got something that just bugs you? ABC 25 wants to know, what's bugging you? Call 332-NEWS or fax us at 332-2418. Then watch ABC 25 News at 7 every Monday and find out the solution to what's bugging you. I saw your program and I decided to uh, fax your letter and see if you could help me out. What's bugging you? Mondays at 7, only on ABC 25. A quiet middle-class neighborhood on the south side wakes up to a disturbing sight. Crime tape and police around the home on Ring Lane where a man was found stabbed to death. It happened early this morning. The man's body was found inside his home when his brother stopped to pick him up for work. 
Neighbors say they did not hear or see anything that was even suspicious. Police are trying to find the victim's roommate for questioning. That roommate has not, by the way, been named as a suspect. Still a lot of unanswered questions surrounding the murder of a child in DeKalb, DeKalb County, Georgia. Police say a woman stabbed her four-year-old daughter to death, then tried to kill herself. That mother has been charged with murder and remains under close watch at a hospital in Atlanta. A Florida state inmate sets his mattress on fire, forcing the evacuation of 96 other inmates. Once outside, several of the prisoners started fighting, and when guards tried to stop that fight, three officers were injured. One was stabbed in the arm, one suffered a broken nose, and another had cuts and bruises. Meanwhile, seven inmates complained of breathing problems. Prison officials say things are back under control at this hour, and the inmates are being moved to a different wing. And more than 100 college students are evacuated when their apartment complex goes up in flames. Happened in Buckhead, Georgia. The apartments are used as housing for Bauder College. One firefighter received burns to his face. There were no other injuries, but students say it is not the first time flames have forced them out. They say the apartments are unsafe. A whole lot of rubbernecking near Beach Boulevard this morning. And here's why. The driver of a Budweiser beer truck was trying to turn onto Beach Boulevard from St. John's Bluff when something caused it to overturn. The driver escaped without any serious injuries, but as you can see, the truck didn't fare too well. And environmentalists are urging Floridians to help ward off global warming pollution by using solar-powered or electric cars. You can get a glimpse of one of those and a lot of other ideas as the Pollution Solutions Tour makes its way down the East Coast. The products are more expensive, but environmentalists say they will last longer and save you more money in the long run. Coming up after sports, Zoo Atlanta adds two new members to its family. We're going to introduce you to the pair that took 12 years to arrive. That's coming up after sports. Tonight on the ABC 25 Nightcast at 11, how would you like to be more productive and lead a happier life? Sleep disorders, even small ones, have more negative effects than you think. So what can you do to catch some Z's? I'm Keith Koontz. I'll take your questions to the sleep disorder specialist at the Mayo Clinic. Find out the answers, and we'll have tips on how you can get a better night's sleep. Before you toss and turn, turn to ABC 25 Nightcast at 11. The news happens. ABC 25 is first with News Chopper 25. News Chopper 25, on call for you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. News Chopper 25 takes you closer than you've ever been before. Chopper 25, go ahead. It's on microwave. You ready for this? 3, 2, 1. I'm Jen Fisher, News Chopper 25. News Chopper 25, the only news gathering helicopter on the first coast. Police have asked us to join in this search as we bring you live News coverage. Chopper 25, working harder for you. ABC's World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good journalism is about judgments. Here at a refugee camp outside the on Albania. On an everyday basis, we may try to give someone a historical notion of why something is happening. And good judgment comes from experience. America is seen as a country which cannot control violence committed with guns. And knowing enough to tell the whole story. You can get them with a good story. Journalism is ultimately about telling stories. We're not historians, we're journalists. Peter Jennings and World News Tonight, America's most watched nightly news. From the ABC 25 Sports Center, Sports Blitz is brought to you by Mike Davidson Ford at Regency. It's flights and highlights. Let's check out those highlights. Where can you catch the best high school football highlights? ABC 25 flights and highlights Friday nights at 11:15. The Sports Blitz team takes you right into the game with a bird's eye view of all the high flying action. Don't miss flights and highlights Friday nights at 11.15. Brought to you by ScholarAid.com, your local Jeep dealers, and ABC 25. Basketball bad boy Dennis Rodman and his wife Carmen Electra are in the news again tonight. The couple was arrested in Miami. Police say they were called to the Bentley Hotel around 7 this morning after reports of a disturbance. Both were transferred to Miami's jail's uh, domestic violence unit, but later released on $2,500 bail. They were charged with simple battery, which is a misdemeanor. Barry joins us now with a look at sports. What do you have to talk about? What do you want to talk about? Uh, let's talk about Rodman. Okay. No. He's got nice hair. <laughs> let's talk about football. Okay. You ever been to the Georgia Dome? In Atlanta. Yeah? Yeah, once. Yeah. I, I saw the, um, the Falcons play the uh, St. Louis Rams okay. because the St. Louis Rams are doing very well. All right, well, you might be back because the Super really? Bowl is there. Yeah, so get right. ready. Right. Trip to the Georgia Dome for the Jaguars this weekend, perhaps the first of two this year, the Super Bowl 
is played in that same building come late January. This time, though, just a regular season game against the Falcons. All year long, the Jaguars' defense has led the way. They are now ranked first in pass defense. Tough to attack that. The run defense ranked 11th, so even though the Falcons' rushing game is 29th in the league, you figure that's where the Falcons will try to do their damage with Ken Oxendine and Byron Hanspar to have come on strong in recent weeks. They're looking for the run. Uh, Oxendine gave them, you know, what they needed there. Uh, uh, Hanspar together combined over 100 yards. They got speed. They got power. They got the big back. They asked him to break tackles. He broke some tackles last weekend. We made some progress the last couple of weeks. Hopefully we can continue to improve on, you know, the running game this week. If we don't, we'll it's going to be more difficult against Jacksonville because they put on such a great pass rush with, you know, uh, their defensive people. They give a lot of blitz schemes and so forth. Well, the Jaguars released their official inactive list today. Chris Howard, Rich Tilski, James Roberson, and Kevin Landolt will all miss the game start time Sunday, 1 o'clock. Relatives, former teammates, and many big names around the NFL gathered outside of Chicago today to pay their final respects to the man they called Sweetness. Invitation only private services for Walter Payton held in South Barrington, Illinois. Public service will be held tomorrow at Soldier Field. One college game last night, Mississippi State improved to 7 0, just about locked up an SEC West title. They beat Kentucky right here. Scott Westerfield, 45 yard field goal. The Bulldogs beat the Wildcats 23 to 22. And as always, for entertainment purposes only, your point spreads for the weekend. The Jaguars, a six point choice over Atlanta. The Gators favored by 28 and a half against Vandy. You know that hook will kill you every time. Miami, eight points over Pittsburgh. Florida State has the weekend off. Bittersweet honor for a PGA player today. Davis Love of St. Simons asked to take Payne Stewart's place in the Tour's Grand Slam tournament that's played by the winners of golf's four majors every year. Now, Love suggested that in honor of Payne, they play just a three man tournament this year. Officials, though, said no, so Love will, in fact, take the U.S. Open champs' place in the event. Day two of the World Golf Championships in Spain today. Look out for Tiger Woods, the winner of three straight events. Tiger throwing darts out of the sand trap. He is two under par, three shots off the pace. Panavidra's VJ Singh led this thing overnight. Gorgeous shot right here on the par three 12th hole. Singh even par today. He is one whack back. Tim Heron and Chris Perry lead the tournament at minus five. Nine NBA games tonight, one a bit far from home. The Kings and T-Wolves will meet in the Tokyo Dome. And a question here on the Rodman arrest, when they were taken away in handcuffs, were they police handcuffs, or did Dennis and Carmen have their own? Think about that. And I hate showing this stuff, but Karen Adams absolutely demands it. Give me my daily dose of violence, she says. Paul Cruz and the Sabres, Wendell Clark and the Blackhawks going at it. By the way, Buffalo won the game 5-4 in overtime. Kids, don't try that at home. That's sports. Let's throw it back to the news desk. I think Rodman gave her jewelry, and that's what started the fight. It wasn't the kind of jewelry she expected. It was handcuffs. Coming up at 7 on ABC 25 tonight, more information about a Jacksonville teacher accused of harming a preschooler. We'll tell you just what witnesses say really happened in her classroom. Plus, a Jacksonville band still needs your help getting to the Sugar Bowl. We'll tell you about a charitable boost from one company. That's in about 30 minutes on ABC 25 tonight. Finally tonight, two long-awaited visitors are finally in Atlanta. Pandas Loon Loon and Yang Yang came in from China this morning. Getting two year old giant panda pair took two, or rather, took Zoo Atlanta 12 years. It's now the third American zoo to borrow the highly endangered, endangered giant pandas for captive breeding. The zoo will pay China $1 million a year and will have the pandas for 10 years. The only catch any babies the two produce will still belong to China. You know, if they didn't get here on time, there would have been pandemonium. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. ABC World News Tonight with Peter Jennings is up next. They're groaning back in the control room. <laughs> We're out of time. You're up to date. Back here at 7. Hope to see you then. Good night. On World News Tonight this Friday, getting closer to the black boxes from Egypt Air Flight 9.